So I'm getting pretty close to this original file that I made. One of the differences still is that this guy has some really nice lighting on his shoulders and his neck, and it's too much of a dark silhouette here. So what I will need to do is um, put some more lighting just on the guy, but not too much on the sky around him. We might need to make another layer for that. So this is the guy in the sky, this layer here. And I have it on hard light to get those really light colors. I'm going to try making another copy of that with Control C, Control V. It makes this guy too light, but um, I can go back and erase that later. And I don't have to use the hard light. What I'm looking for is something to make his shoulders lighter. And you can get some really nice, I mean, if this was sunset, if I was trying to go something darker, you can get some really nice colors with the multiply and the overlay. Overlay is usually just a little bit stronger and sharper, but not too much. So if you want a normal picture to be a little bit sharper, you can make a copy of it and then put it to overlay, and it'll just make all the colors and everything pop out a little bit. This one is screen. That's a little better. You get a little bit of the light, but not as much as I want. Subtract is like a negative. It makes the opposite. Invert is a negative. You could do some if I wanted to do this completely reverse and make him white at the bottom, I could have done that. It's a pretty neat, it'd be more for like a thriller or supernatural, but that's not what I'm going for. Looks like screen is going to be my best, my best bet. And um, see, this one is on screen. That's where you get the really nice lighting. And actually, there's even more colors on top of here. So it's this layer. That's making it a little bit too dark. This is that hard light. So if I set this one to hard light, and then I set this one to screen, and then I go back to the one that's on hard light, and I just erase a little bit. Oops. Hold on a sec. So what I need to do, it's a little tricky. It's making this layer that's on hard light is making this too dark and this too light. So if I put the screen on top, I need to use the eraser. And erase a little bit of this layer. I raised too much. And then I would also erase some of this screen layer that I put on top. And I can leave a little bit of fog around him. I don't have to get too close. The fog will just kind of help him stand out because it's a dark silhouette. And I could even duplicate that again and get a little more light. It's not exactly the same as I had done here, um, but it's getting pretty close. And the one big difference is up here on top, there's this blue. So I'm going to show you how to add a color 
gradient, which is pretty useful. The colors actually are really strong here already. Um, if I was doing this for a cover, I'd probably try to lighten him up a little bit in the bottom a little more. But if I want to add a gradient, I could um, have a pre-save gradient layer and open it with import. But what I can also do is just make a square using add image and then this square tool. Then I can go back up here and I can choose either a color, a solid color, or a gradient. And I'm going to pick a gradient that looks like this. It's just blue on the top. I'm going to make that a darker blue. And then just white. And I'll show you, I won't put it all the way yet so you can see, but I can use the same thing with my blending layers, and I can see what looks good. Probably it's going to be multiply. You can also use this to change the colors really dramatically. You can experiment by putting some, putting a gradient and then just blending with different modes. That's what difference. That one, if I wanted to do a lot more um, mist. The other thing I could do, and this looks pretty neat because it looks really misty, but I could also go back up here and if I select this white layer, What I've done is just, I've changed the alpha, which is the transparency. So I've removed the white from the bottom, but I've left the blue that's up on top. So now I still get this blue coming down on top. And the light is actually a little bit lighter than it was before. But that's because of the blending I'm using. Which is actually pretty good because it gives more detail to the guy standing. Except if there's too much light, then you can see that it doesn't quite look natural that he's standing on the bridge. So with any new layer that you add, you can just play with these blending and then see blending effects and see what looks the best. Multiply is usually good for a color layer. And we could do the same thing if that's too dark. We could just erase some of it from the bottom. I think we can anyway, maybe not. We may not be able to erase a rectangle that's set up like this. So it's not quite the same. If I kept working on it, I probably would try to get this color back in his shoulders because it's a little bit better in that original than it is here. Although it's getting pretty close. I think that's because of this layer, which I have it set it darken. It's kind of tricky once you, because there's all these different layers and you have all these different blending effects. Once you have a bunch of layers, if you make some changes and then you try to go back to what it was like before, it can get tricky to match exactly, especially because what I could also be doing, let me go back to where it was. What I could also be doing with all of these, if I didn't want it quite as strong, if I just want a little bit, like this one, I could go over to Effects and Transparency, and I could change the transparency. 
So it's not quite zero and it's not quite 100%, but a little bit more subtle somewhere in the middle. So I could change the transparency and also these blending effects to blend layers together until I get it where I want it. And this isn't quite finished. I'll probably work on it some more to get it more like this. But I can save this as a project file and I can come back and keep working on it later. Hopefully this one will save even though I put a lot of different layers in it. So the file size is probably pretty big. But we'll see if this works. It's been taking about 20 seconds to save a project file um, because you're saving these really large files. Yeah, it looks like this one is too big also. I put too many different layers in there. But I can save it as a JPEG or a PNG. Also, when you're experimenting with the layers, Oops, I lost that one. 